večer, spoštovani gospod in gospodje. Moram reči, da kar nekaj časa nisem verjel, da bo ta večer mogoč. Pa je prišlo potem, predvsem zaradi velikodušnosti profesore dr. Jaumure, do te možnosti, tudi s pomočjo njegovih belgrajskih prijateljev, ki jih tukaj posebej pozdravljam, profesore dr. Momira Duniča, profesore dr. Slaviša Stanišiča in druge člane Srbskega Združenja za integrativno medicino. Naj povem, da so med nami tudi zdravniki iz Turčije in iz Bolgarije. Goste sem sveda pozdravil najprej, ampak vidim v dvorani tudi slovenske onkologe, pa kardiologe in še kakšno špecialnost bi lahko imenoval. Sem zelo vesel, da ste se oglasili in vidim tudi člane Združenja za integrativno medicino. Zelo sem vesel in počešen, da nas je profesor Omura počast v svoje prisotnosti, da je po kongresu, sedmem Evropskem kongresu integrativne medicine, poklonu v Sloveniji tri dni, ker se je tukaj pojavilo veliko zanimanje za njegovo delo. Torej, danes bomo lahko iz prve roke slišali, kaj pomeni njegova metoda, o kateri lahko sveda predvsej preberete tudi na Google-u, zato jaz ne bom šel v razlago, tudi ne bom šel globoko v njegov življenje pis. Gospod bo danes povedal, kako je prišel do teh spoznajn, kaj danes to pomeni. Vprašal ga bom tudi, kaj njemu pomeni koncept integrativne onkologije. On namreč izdaja revijo s tem naslovom. Torej, jaz bom zdaj pre, pre, zaradi, zaradi, da ne bom imeli tehničnih težav, bom preprešel na angliščino. So, I will speak English from now. So, yeah, you don't need any more. So, distinguished Professor Omura, welcome again. Thank you very much, yeah. Uh, uh, we are all pleased and honored by your presence here today. And... Uh, as uh, you have heard, there are medical doctors here, uh, maybe also some patients, but definitely people who admire your work, uh, your achievements, uh, your method, and uh, we are pleased uh, uh, to have this opportunity uh, to, to, to listen to you uh, today. Uh, as I said, I will not uh, describe your CV in details, uh, Google uh, can tell uh, tells you uh, a lot about you tells us a lot about you uh, I I will overjump your Japanese uh, time let's say so uh, you graduated in physics and uh, medicine and then you decided to go to the United States uh, my first question uh, is how did you land in the oncological area, let's say so. How, how was the way to oncology in your case? Well, actually, I was not particularly interested. But uh, when I was at uh, Columbia University and uh, I solved some of the difficult problem in the uh, Department of Surgery at Columbia University, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the uh, death rate by open heart surgery was at that time very high, mm -hmm. and nobody knew why. And uh, so eventually, I I solved that problem. Then the chairman was so happy. He said he would do you know whatever I like to do. Mm -hmm. So I told that I want to go to cardiac surgery. 
but for some reason, he said, I asked the two things. I want to go to cardiac surgery. The other one was uh, continue my research in experimental physics at the mm-hmm. graduate school of the Columbia University Physics Department. Mm-hmm. But that one, he did the same day. He made the arrangement. So I end up three and a half years going to Columbia University Physics Department. Mm-hmm. Daytime, I was working as a surgeon. On the night, I went to uh, physics department. Mm-hmm. And but he, when one year came, instead of putting me cardiac surgery, he said, this is the only position available for you. You are going to be an oncologist. Ah, so it was decision of the others, yeah. <laughs> of, of the situation. Yeah. Say. And which were your first experiences uh, mm. uh, being sur- uh, surgeon in oncology? Oh, uh, first of all, I was, uh, while I was doing uh, uh, this uh, surgery, uh, oncological surgery, one of the patients, I thought he would be the first one to die, yeah. but uh, he refused to do any uh, surgery, and also he refused to do chemotherapy. And he has a, the reason was that he is a Jehovah's witness, Mm -hmm. and he is not supposed to get any transfusion. Mm -hmm. So there are many patients, he was the longest lived who refused to treat surgery and the chemotherapy. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, I realized that, and I decided I abandoned surgery. Yeah. And uh, we start concentrating nothing but non-invasive technique of diagnosis and treatment. And how hmm. did you come to, to your method? How, how did you develop it? Well, you know, problem with uh, present Western medicine is almost like witchcraft because, uh, you know, in the physics, you can predict certain things and uh, try to, and to confirm by experiment. Mm. But uh, Western medicine, you don't even know which medicine is actually working or effective or harmful, but you give to the patient and will see you until next meeting. <laughs> it's almost like witchcraft. It's not science. Mm. But that's standard practice of medicine. And I was not happy. And uh, then, I understand, then you, you studied... Uh, you, 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 you discovered uh, that uh, uh, Mikhailo Pupin's uh, discovery, let's say so, on, on electromagnetic resonance. Yes. Uh, so I start going to, in the evening to uh, graduate experimental physics laboratory. Mm. And uh, I can select, you know, the one most, I'm most interested in. I can concentrate. I was interested in the electromagnetic field resonance. And uh, the first, when I was uh, first encountered this electromagnetic resonance laboratory, which was established by Professor Pupin, Mm. he came from former Yugoslavia. But that was, uh, uh, I'm not sure, Serbia or what country, but uh, uh, he was uh, around 1910. He was a professor of the, this Pupin 
physics experimental laboratory. Mm -hmm. And he discovers that I'll show you. <coughs> this is a model actually. This is a coil, this is a capacitance. But when I first went this laboratory, they kept the original instrument. And the equivalent of this was like big like this. Mm -hmm. Coil was like this. And the condenser was big like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he discovers that when you put this circuit and if you put a parallel like this, and when you give a electrical stimulation here, this produces a sine wave oscillation. And this you did not give anything, but when these coil and uh, this uh, capacitance is the uh, same value, then the same waveform develop in here. They are not connected. And, uh, but this unit was a big like this, each one. So we did the experiment, one here, and then the one end of the room, you can see that. And you can measure this oscillation in here mm. because they have a you know, very sensitive oscilloscopes. So you connect this one. As soon as you put in the parallel location, they produce like this. And uh, and then, you know, I become very much interested, and uh, and also I was uh, uh, impressed because uh, they kept the original instrument they discovered this phenomena, mm -hmm. and uh, so I was thinking, this is a LC circuit, you know, coil and capacitance consisting coil and capacitance, and this is called the LC resonance circuit. So instead of the LC resonance circuit, uh, first, you know, we want to see the you know, small unit like this, and, uh, and then the, see how far we can go. So we can go as far as we can see, same thing happen. Mm. So then I discovered when I combine with the bidigital O-ring test without oscilloscope, just by putting uh, this one, for example, in your hand like this, mm. and uh, if we put this in a parallel position, and then this become a oriented, yeah. no, no, we just <laughs> It's completely open now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't resist. <laughs> it's completely open. Yeah. <laughs> then the, when I change to this direction, yeah. it's weakest. Left. We cannot even open. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was uh, impressed, you know, because yeah. now we found we can detect the same thing without using expensive big or short scope. Yeah. So next question was that instead of the this LC socket, if we replace this by molecule, two molecules. Mm -hmm. One molecule is another molecule. What happened? And when you do that identical two molecules, they produce the same thing, mm -hmm. except they don't become strong regardless of the angle. As long as it's straight, you get this weakening. Mm -hmm. So we found you know, this phenomena. So I, I said... I started doing an experiment with uh, all kinds of molecules. 
we are able to reproduce the same thing. And then we start to applying if patient have a cancer and uh, if we have a cancer slide, same thing will happen or not. Mm. And happened to be first patient was a, a late uh, president of New York State Board of Medicine. Nobody knew what is his cause of the abdominal pain, but I suspected pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So we used the pancreatic cancer. We found the resonance, and we can able to localize the exact location. Mm -hmm. Well, standard laboratory tests could not find. So we started testing how far this phenomenon can occur. And instead of just room, uh, we extended this, uh, this coil to about a visible distance of 200 meters. Mm -hmm. Still exactly the same weakening happened. Yeah. <clears throat> and of course in the molecule, in the body, they attenuate so the distance become not so many uh, dist mm -hmm. uh, you know, meters, but within the body, I can detect any molecule inside of the brain or body, any part of the body. And in animals as well? In animal, any, any living material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can First, you know, using budget rolling test, we can identify any abnormal part of the body because the abnormal part, if you touch, rolling will open. Mm -hmm. With one exception, we found the thymus gland is the only exception. Normally, it is weak and abnormal, it becomes stronger. But rest of the body, any abnormality by touching or by projecting a laser beam, monochronal light beam, they produce the same phenomena. And so we can localize any disease at any part of the body very quickly, non-invasively, without taking a sample of the blood, without taking a you know, biopsy, mm -hmm. and so become a non-invasive, simple, safe method of detecting any disease, including cancer, infection, and uh, and then uh, another advantage is that you can also find out which medication or which treatment will be effective. And uh, if you have uh, 10 different medicines, presumably they are effect known to be effective. But when I tested, for example, a very common broad spectrum uh, amoxicillin, mm. there is a more than 10 company makes it. When I test, we found uh, one of them not only not helpful, actually harms the patient. And the rest of them, they have a different degree of effectiveness. And we can detect the most effective one. And once you detect, then the, you can test with the patient. And uh, individually, optimal dose is different. And we can determine. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, so that you can tell before you give the medication to the patient, you can tell in advance whether this medication will work and if it works, mm -hmm. how it will work and what result you will obtain before you give to them rather than just say, take this medicine without even knowing work or not. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I would like to ask you mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. 
uh, your uh, how uh, has been received your method by by medical circles? What you said? How how your method was uh, received or accepted or considered by mm. by by. Um, by medical circles. Okay, I'll tell you about this, yeah. Mm. Uh, one of the, uh, one professor who was a former dean of the, uh, one of the uh, medical school in the United States, and uh, he had a heart problem. And the cardiologist want to determine, you know, one of the drug, mm -hmm. what is the optimal dose for him. She asked me to examine with my method. She said to determine, cardiologist took about two months to figure out. Mm -hmm. So I determined and I told her how much it was. She said it's almost identical with uh, his cardiologist determined after two months of the mm -hmm. trial and mm -hmm. uh, many trials. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she said, but she said, unless somebody approves this, some government official, people are difficult to believe this. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, what should I do? He said, apply U.S. patent. Yeah. If they approve it, you know, regardless of what other people say, this is a U.S. patent approved. Mm. So I applied it. First, we got the response. He says, it is uh, too good to believe. Mm. And uh, you have to provide more multiple evidence. Mm. So it took three years. And then they said, you prove that Dr. Omura can do it. Mm. But there is no proof that other doctors can do it. <laughs> so... <laughs> My patent lawyer asks, you know, what do you suggest? Mm. They suggested at least 10 professors in the medical school, dental school, and the engineering school can uh, do repeat experiment and uh, can prove that this is uh, real. Mm. Then they will approve it. It took another three years. Mm. But now there are many, many, many medical doctors uh, using your oh, method. Yeah. But still, you know, some people are not only skeptical, mm. but some people don't want me to teach this. Mm. So they do all kinds of negative things put in the mm. you know, computer, including Wikipedia. Mm. False statement. Mm. You... You presented a few days ago in Belgrade yeah. uh, uh, some cases mm -hmm. um, which, uh, which in my, my eyes were very exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, could you um, mm -hmm. tell us uh, a little bit about, about mm -hmm. those uh, achievements uh, mm -hmm. with Alzheimer and uh, with, with the loss of memory? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Alzheimer's patient... That was, uh, uh, I was invited to the uh, World Congress at Bulgaria on acupuncture. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, I was supposed to do the first plenary lecture. Mm -hmm. But my, I sent my slide in the suitcase my suitcase never arrived. And they said it's lost somewhere. <laughs> so until, you know, I get the suitcase, I cannot give a lecture because uh, mm. there's nothing to show. 
So they said, I want you to demonstrate how I treat Alzheimer's disease. So they brought a, a, about 60 years old woman who was a wife of army general. So the, they had a best hospital in the army mm. for some reason. And uh, so their doctor came with this patient. And uh, I tell something, you know, I just came from New York. Can you remember this? One, two minutes later, she don't even remember mm. who I am mm. because there is no short-term memory. Mm. And uh, so I examined her brain with a budgetary rolling test. Remember, budgetary rolling test, we can localize any abnormal area and also we can find out if there is a malignancy or if there is an infection. And if it's an infection, it's a, you know, what kind of virus or what kind of bacteria. So we found both uh, bacteria and virus in her uh, brain. So we know the effective medication. So we gave first to her. And also we can, uh, we can localize if the medication is reaching in the area you want to treat. Mm. When I examined, no medication is reaching in the area I want to treat. So that means there will be no effect. So the, I thought, you know, maybe if we give electrical stimulation, I can increase the drug uptake. So we give electrical stimulation. Uh, within a half hour, her memory, she starts talking like a normal person, and the memory is completely normal. Mm -hmm. And the beneficial effect lasted one year. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and the other case was uh, this uh, uh, young graduate of Stanford University. Stanford University is a, one of the famous universities. And uh, his uh, uh, father was a president of big shipping business in Brazil. And, uh, but shortly after he graduated, he was drowned in the sea while he was swimming. And then somebody found and brought to the hospital. She was unconscious about two weeks. And when he woke up, his mental state was about three years old. And uh, after that, they spent a few years, all kind of treatment. At the end, uh, he went uh, Karolinska Institute in Sweden. And uh, professor and the chairman of the neurology department, he, he was admitted two months after all kind of treatment and examination. They concluded that they, they can, there is no possibility he can be treated. And uh, <laughs> minus four, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. I, I had good intention, but <laughs> <laughs> so the, they give a reason. They show the MRI, they said MRI show significant atrophy of the cerebral cortex. Mm. And a few days ago, I actually I showed this, this MRI picture. And therefore, there is no possibility you can treat. Then the, since then, 25 years later, 
there was a, in front of my apartment in New York, there is a middle-aged woman and this uh, three-year-old mental state man standing. And uh, they said they come from Brazil and until I see they are not going to live here. <laughs> So I said, who, told, who suggested? He said, uh, his doctor is a Japanese origin. He read my book on digital rolling test. Mm -hmm. And uh, before you gave up, at least try to see Dr. Omura. So I end up examining. And, and so I, I told that I will do that. And, next day. So next day he came. Mm. I examined the brain. Again, he has a multiple mixed infection of bacteria and virus and uh, reduced brain circulation, reduced acetylcholine. So there's mm. no way brain can function. And then the, they show the, this atrophied brain, <laughs> MRI picture. Mm. And I gave effective medication. Again, that did not reach the area. So I gave a electrical stimulation, put the electrode here and here, cover the entire brain, electrical stimulated. In about 30 minutes, he start talking like a normal person. After 25 years? Yes. And so, I, I thought, you know, there must be some changes in the brain. Yeah. It's hard to believe. So I sent to the MRI. I cannot tell which picture was before, which picture was afterwards. Yeah. Essentially, there is no changes. Still atrophy the brain. Mm. So simply because the MRI show brain is atrophied, there is no definite reason you cannot treat. Mm. And uh, he was uh, supposed to call me, you know, every few months. He called me about, three, about two or three years. After that, I did not hear. Then about 10 years later, we start going to Brazil uh, at least, you know, once a year to teach the budget rolling test for a group mm. of the doctors. Then I remember this patient, we localized him. We were able to speak with him. Mm -hmm. He's still in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, even the case, you know, as a common sense, it will not work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can save this patient. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. I, I have my last question, then uh, the audience uh, will have the chance to, to ask you questions as well. Yeah. How would you define integrative medicine? Yeah. What, what, what's the essence of, of, this, of this term or of this concept? Well, or integrative yeah. oncology, we can say. First, you know, Diagnosis must be non-invasive, safe, and quick, accurate, and inexpensive. Mm. And for treatment, ideally non-invasive and safe and effective, and economical. <laughs> no side effect. That is my concept to integrative medicine. Thank you very much, mm. Dr. Omura. <clears throat> mm. I, I see that <clears throat> the concept of the integrative medicine mm. uh, uh, is getting more popular in the European mm. Union. I attended two congresses and uh, I see, uh, I wouldn't say that popularity is growing, but uh, the understanding of the concept is growing and uh, I consider this uh, as a very, very good, good fact. Uh, uh, we see that uh, all health systems in the member states of the European Union are facing problems, uh, uh, and uh, 
I think that with integral concepts, uh, we can get closer, the different, I would say, lines, uh, with less ideology, <clears throat> more uh, patient-centered. Uh, and uh, I would wish that the knowledge uh, you developed and you offered uh, uh, to the humanity uh, is more used uh, in the future. And I'm pleased to see here your followers, I would say, professors from different uh, countries uh, here who wish uh, together with you to, to spread or to share this knowledge with those who wish to use it. <coughs> So, I would like to invite now also uh, Mr. Uh, Igor uh, Ogoreuts uh, uh, to join us, uh, one of the co-founders of the um, Association for Integrative Medicine of Slovenia. Uh, uh, maybe questions will, will, will be addressed also, also to you and uh, the association is co-organizer of this evening. Tako, gospe, gospodje, če želi kdo, ki vprašati, zdaj je, zdaj je prilka. Dobar dan, moje ime je Senja Brzin. Mene je zelo zanimajo te nove metode, ker jaz mislim, da se je treba v tem vizu preživeti. Me pa moram reči, da jaz tega, ki je več ne poznam, zanima me pa... Zanima me pa, kako se te stvari razvijajo v Sloveniji in če mogoče ima doktor Omura kakšnega protežeja, kakšnega zdravnika, ki ga uči te stvari tle v Sloveniji. Tako da bi mi, slovenci, imeli tudi dostop do takih naprednih metod. Hvala lepa. Jaz, vi imamo profesor Dunjik. Vi je prezident srbijan Integrative Medicine Association. And uh, he is uh, one of the few people who spend a lot of time with me. And, uh, and he is uh, one also organized this International Congress, which he introduced the budget rolling test to Europe. And uh, he's the best one to talk to him. <laughs> so we will give him the chance to, 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 to tell us uh, how this uh, method was introduced in, yes. in, in Serbia. Uh, good evening, my dear friends from Slovenia. Uh, first, I have to introduce that uh, we, uh, from a Serbian Association for, of Integrative Medicine, helped to establish the Slovenian Association of Integrative Medicine. And also, we helped to establish the Master of Integrative Medicine of University Alma Mater Europa, European Center Maribor. <clears throat> so the part of this program in Maribor is uh, by digital learning test. First, uh, on the question of the, this nice lady, uh, you already have uh, two educated medical doctors uh, in Slovenia who, which passed uh, school in Belgrade because we have uh, only uh, authorized school and uh, registered school for by digital learning test for Europe. <clears throat> so they on they passed but didn't start it yet to work because the law in Slo Slovenia <laughs> medical law don't allow now to, to work because this, this is not yet official medicine. Although we are working, we are giving a fort together to change uh, law in Slovenia and to accept and to make the possibility for all doctors to work together. As in Serbia, we can do and the official medicine and complementary medicine together. It, yes, it's a, it's a uh, <laughs> I am a followed Professor Omura 
almost 17 years and did many research on, with, by digital ring test and support uh, uh, and organized now European, Cong uh, European Congress of Integrative Medicine as a vice president of European Association and my colleague Professor Stanisic also in the European Board of uh, uh, Integrative Medicine as a Professor Zmago Turk from Maribor. <laughs> so we are trying together to, <laughs> to, to work on the prom promotion Many, on many complementary uh, medicine as by digital learning test. I, I would like to say one thing. Uh, so, uh, this is a very advanced method in diagnosis. Uh, 15 years ago, when I wanted to work, uh, first I have to say that I am an OBGYN doctor, <laughs> associate professor of gynecology and obstetrics, and also uh, a professor of, of complementary and, and integrative medicine of pharmaceutical faculty in, in Serbia. I have to, to say how much is it advanced the, the method. Uh, I didn't say, I didn't want to talk uh, for many years because the people don't understand you. Uh, 15 years ago when we wanted to, to make some trial to some clinical uh, research on the uh, Institute of Lung Disease uh, in Belgrade. And uh, I showed in this director, surgeon, very famous in that time, Professor Mandaric, uh, I showed him how by digital or in test to work. And he said, okay, I will open the door for, of clinics for your research. But I then, I uh, wanted to show him how the method is advanced. I made diagnosis on the x-ray of, of, of some patient and said, this is a plan, uh, epidermid cancer of the lung. And he take the paper, took the paper uh, from the history and said, yes, the pathohistological Yes, it's an epidermid, epidermid uh, cancer of the lung. This, in, in Serbia, epidermid cancer of the lung is in, is in the patients is only 1%. And said, you are right, but I don't believe you anymore. <laughs> it was a reaction on the making diagnosis. Very, very precisely diagnosis. So, then the close the door. I don't want to talk with, with us, because one professor of pathohistology said, don't give him to work because we will lose the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is, but I started now to, to, to talk about, because Professor Omura uh, discovered, I think maybe about 30 years ago, uh, photon transmission information yes, yeah. about 13 years ago that every x-ray, PET scan, MRI and the, and the photographs contain all informations of patient. But now I can talk very open because uh, in Serbia a years ago professor of physics in the, on the faculty of electrical engineering made software which confirmed all these things. They are, inf they are software which on the digital photographs say it's a precancer of the colon or this is a precancer of the pancreas, etc. And uh, I will be included in the uh, in research of, in, on uh, OBGYN uh, oncology of, with, with this new software. There are digital f uh, ca camera, photos, and uh, immediately you can get uh, uh, information that is uh, some something because photon tra have all ha have all information and this uh, by digital interest belong to the medicine we called quantum medicine because the smallest part of of, in of information is a photon <laughs> and because i and maybe how how much is advanced i will say uh, one case is uh, a month ago in zagreb they invited me to, to, to check one uh, uh, patient from the split. And he was seated on the chair. He said, 
Uh, my friends told me that you will, you can make the, me diagnose it and to see what what's going on. Okay, we checked him and said you, 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 your problem started from the colon and then you you have metastasis on the liver. Next is a metastasis on the left lung and then on the on the spine, lumbar spine. He said, yes, you are right. Thank you very much. I had surgery three years ago of the colon cancer, and I preparing. I will have. Uh, I, I have a metastasis on the liver on the place where you sure, and I I will have I will have surgery in the next five days, but I didn't know for my lung. But tomorrow I will get. Uh, I will I will have a PET scan diagnosis. And I feel some lumbar pain, but I don't care about. And then, tomorrow, they, they made PET scan, and they found some, some uh, sign at, without explanation of the, of the uh, specialist of radiology who made this plan. They said there's some informal uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the place. <laughs> And they didn't. They didn't. They wasn't sure. Is it metastasis or not? It, we made diagnosis within 15 minutes, and didn't show on the some, that something developed on the lumbar spine. So I can show how is advanced, more precise than PET scan, which is the most now accurate method in official medicine. Thank you. Hey, uh Jaz bi rad dodal, da je ta metoda v srbskem zakonu uvrščena v sektor kvantne medicine. Se izvaja legalno, ker je bistvo. Vi imamo školu in potem ministr v health, potem passing the exam, get diploma, and get licensed to work. You, you can continue also in, in the language we knew before better. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Veronika Klimenčić. I'm very much interested. Um, I have a question for Dr. Petele. I'm very much I'm, interested. Yeah, first of all, my first question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will have some more questions later. Um, Mr. Petele, when and how did you get in contact with the medical methods of, of uh, Dr. Omura? And how this method helped you to reach your Jaz sem zvedel za doktore Omura na kongresu integrativne medicine v Firencah, kjer sem tudi najprej srečal profesorja Duniča. Potem sem srečal kot poročevalec za strateški sporazum med Evropsko zvezo in Japonsko njegove kolege medicince na japonskem, ko sem se trudil, da bi zdravje zapisali kot enega od področji strateškega sodelovanja med Evropsko zvezo in Japonsko. Tam sem srečal njegovega prijatelja dr. Šimucuro in še druge zved zdravnike sem se tam srečal In takrat, to je bilo prvič, no drugič, ko sem bil drugič na Japonskem, sem se pa srečal tudi z njim. In mi je sam ponudil, če me zanima njegova metoda, kako to zgleda, se nekaj mene, mene zelo zanima. In sva potem oziroma je v relativno kratkem času ugotovo še enega začetnega raka pri meni. Ampak jaz se nisem niti kaj dost sekiral, nekako se mi je zdel, da sem v pravih rokah, oziroma itak imam ženo izkušnjo za seboj, 
in mi je tudi, tudi, tudi svetoval, kaj, kaj naj delam. In, uh, skratka, to je bilo najno, najno srečanje, uh, najn stik. Potem smo se videli ponovno v Beogradu uh, na, na tem kongresu integrativne medicine. V mes se je pa zgodilo to, kar sem prej povedal, da je bilo mogoče, da pride tudi k nam. Jaz sem seveda potem precej bral to, kar, kar, kar piše o njem in njegovi metodi, se pogovarjal z ljudmi, ki to prakticirajo in ker se mi je zdela to resna zadeva, sem se ji preko malce po svetu in doživel seveda doma pri nas tudi značilne odmeve, ne? ker Lejte, nekatere pri nas vznemirja že to, da gospod nima tukaj nobenega ekrana, pa nobenih e, aparatur, da kar nekaj z rokami dela in z tega so se eni kar malo norčevali, bodimo iskreni. Ne? E, ne? Ampak jaz pa uživam v tem, da, da ne rabi nobenih žic, pa kablov, pa, 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 pa displejev, da, da on lahko to, da je razvil metodo pač nekega drugačnega ugotavljanja resnice o zdravju ljudi ne? in še kaj drugega terapevcuja, kot je povedal. Ne? Men so najbolj všeč preproste pa učinkovite stvari, če so pa še pocen, kot je rekel, pa še boljše. Ne? E, tako da e, e, mene seveda moti to, da ene moti dejstvo, daj pocen. Razume, se razvojimo. Ne? In jaz, ki se v Evropskem parlamentu ukvarjam predvsem z zdravjem, ugotavljam, da, da nas bolezni prehitevajo, da pa da nas pa cene zdravil dan za dnem uznemirajo, ker so vsak dan višje. Ne? Načelo zdravje za vse, jaz mislim, da je, da je marsi, ki je že ogroženo. Vsak si ne more prvošet, prvošet najdraže terapije, ko je lahko v največji preizkušnji. E, in zato mislim, jaz, jaz na to ne gledam kot zdravnik, ne, ker to nisem, e, ampak kot človek, ki bi bil izvoljen za to, da dela za skupno dobro. Ne. In jaz mislim, da je treba povezati vse znanje, ki lahko učinkovito pomaga, ne, ker pacijentov ne zanima ne razumijo, kaj je konvencionalno, pa nekonvencionalno razumejo pa, kaj je učinkovito. Ne? E, in jaz mislim, da je treba znanje združvati. In jaz sem imel pri nekaterih novinarjih težave jih prepričati, da gospod ni, ni prišel ne vem, iz Fidži otoka, ali, ali veste, kaj hočem s tem povedati, ampak da je naredil najprej dve diplomi iz medicine, konvencionalne medicine, torej oba gospoda, ki sta zdravnika, sta konvencionalna zdravnika, sta vso šolsko medicino, eh, reku, eh, sta bila vzgojena, izobražena v tem duhu. Eh, potem je pa gospod kot konvencionalni zdravnik je povedal, do kašnega paradoksa je prišel v svojo onkološki praksi, je pa razvil novo metodo. Ne? In z novim imamo večkrat težave, ker pač... Eh, Niso vsi za to, da se novo uveljavi. Ne? Ampak jaz imam vtis, potem, kar doslej vem o tej metodi in vidim, kako jo uspešno prakticirajo. Torej tole, kar je Alzheimer jo povedal. Ali pa, da, da se je človeku po 25 letih, 25 let je bil kot, izgledal kot otrok treh let, v, po tiste po ure, tret maja je pa postal spet tak, kot je bil. Mislim, je, je s pregovorom normalno so velike zadeve, ne, jaz nisem tukaj, da, da propagiram zadeve, mi je pa e, zelo pomembno, da vem za tak primer, ne, jaz hodim vsak teden obiskvat mamo v en dom, ne, kjer so redki ljudje, s katerimi se lahko še pogovarjam, ne, pa vem, da do nekateri še dolgo živeli in mi je tak podatek izredno pomemben, se pravi, da je tudi tukaj možna reverzibilnost, kako se temu reče, da je mogoče vzpostavče stanje ki nam je bilo ljubše oziroma je bilo bolj zdravo. Ne? Se opravi, čujem, sem si tukaj časa zdaj vzel, ampak se mi je zdaj vprav, da vam tole takole odgovorim. Še kakšno vprašanje. Mislim, da... Ok.
Hello, my name is Boja. I'm ordinary citizen. I would just like to ask if you could explain, please, uh, what did you say about that minus four for a glass of water? <laughs> <laughs> Anything, uh, all in will open, we call minus. And uh, ideally, uh, eating or drink, drinking or Anything wearing on the body should be plus. And the higher the negative value, it is harmful for the human body or animal body or whoever wearing it. And, uh, and drinking water, this cup is okay, but uh, water is minus four. Usually we don't uh, drink anything minus, but when I came to this country, every time I go to a restaurant, most of the water is a minus four to minus seven. Some of them are minus 12, which is a completely not suitable for drinking. And, uh, but people don't realize they're just uh, customary drinking. And, uh, so, minus four, I will not, never touch it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a minus one, sometimes I drink it because when there is nothing positive. Ampak danes smo bili nekje, ker je bilo veliko pozitivnih stvari, moram povedati. Ja moram samo da kažem, da hočete najgosti, Razumemo se, razumemo. Slovene nečki još nisa nauči, počeo sem da uči. Izvolite. Kaj ne srpskom? Šta je to minus, a šta je plus? Znači, plus je ono što drži snagu mišića. Minus je ono gde se mišićna snaga gubi kada se testira nešto. Kada se gubi snaga, to nije kompatibilno sa organizmom. To je nešto što smanjuje snagu, naš mozak reaguje i mišići popuštaju. Ta hrana, ta voda je štetna. Zašto vam sad ovo pričam? Ova voda na izvoru može da bude odlična. Pričam jednu priču koja se desila pre tri nedelje, pre tri sedmice. Pozvala me jedna poznata kompanija iz Srbije koja je htela da bude sponsor upravo juče završenog kongresa. Ja sam rekao, ne možete, iako nudite toliko novca, Ne možete da budete zato što vaši proizvodi nisu dobri, nisu kompatibilni sa organizmom, ali mi koji promovišemo zdrav život i integrativnu medicinu, ne možemo stati iza toga. Onda su oni rekli, ne znam, naše analize su sve u redu. Ne mora i analize da bude, ne mora i da budu toksine, nešto se dešava u procesu proizvodnje. I oni su mene poveli u fabriku koja je negde stotinak kilometra južno od Beograda, Proverili smo vodu, voda je odlična, na izvoru. I išli smo od dela proizvodnje do dela proizvodnje da proveravamo vodu. I postoji jedan laserski sistem koji određuje nivo punjenja vode. Određuje kada će ona mašina da dođe da napuni vodu tamo gde se pune te ove pet flaše. I vrlo interesantna stvar, da taj laser polazi tijelom ta mašina koja ima radioaktivnosti u sebi. I mi smo išli i našli smo da je došle do tog lasera, posle tog lasera koji prolazi kroz vodu i kroz tu flašu, potpuno se menja struktura vode. I pošto su direktori te fabrike i tehnolozi svi bili, svi smo išli zajedno, I odmah su se uverili kako se menja mišićna snaga, a kada su otvorili kutiju i videli na kojoj piše opasno radioaktivno. Pa kaže, on mi smo merili neku radioaktivnost, ali ne radi se samo o toj radioaktivnosti, radi se o ovome što pričamo o kvantu, o informaciji. Ta informacija je promenila strukturu vode. Voda nije samo H2O, nisu samo ti minerali koji su rastvoreni u njoj, nego je mnogo više. I kada budete malo tražili po internetu, pogledajte koliko ima toga 
o strukturi vode, o uticaju vode na zdravlje. Znači, to su klasteri vode koji menjaju svoj oblik. Dva naučna časopisa, Ruska akademija nauka, objavljuje o mikrofrekvencijama molekula vode. Znači, daleko se otišlo. Mi smo, mi smo ovi, naši inženjeri u Beogradu su napravili zaštitu i postavili na senzor vode, i rekli smo sada možete da budete sponzor. <laughs> mi sada znamo da ta voda, da, da će ta voda biti dobra. A oni su rekli, pa dobro, koliko ćete naplatiti da to ne bude previše skupo ta zaštita? Ne, mi smo rekli, ove, ne, inženjeri poklanjaju to sve jer želimo da narod bude zdrav, jer pije tu vodu. Ne znam, to je. <laughs> Ja sam mislio da, pošto smo ovih dana mnogo pričao i vidi se po ovom glasu, inače profesor Stanićić je inače vajs prezident, popresednik srpskog odruženja i član borod u Berlinu. Ali moram ovom divom narodu da kažem zašto sam ja ovde danas. Zašto sam uopšte u ovome? Kao redovni profesor tri fakulteta, čovjek koji je izlazi iz operacijne sale, koji je radio puno toga do pre deset godina, Nimao sam potpuno drugo mišljenje. Prvo je Valerija Sedlak, izuzetan jedan predavač koja je napustila medicinu kada je shvatila da medicina nije bio hemija nego fizika. Kada mi je prvi rekla, znaš šta Saša, tako smo je zvali, tako me zovu. Kad sam shvatila da se bavim pogrešnom medicinom 30 godina, a ja, da medicina nije bio hemija kako smo učili nego bio fizike, ja sam napustila fakultet. Ja sam se rekao da ja neću. Kolega Dunjić, ja sam njegov mentor bio u ginekologiji, to je klasično u visoj medicini. Ja sam prvi put čuo o ovoj metodi kada je on dolazio ti godine iz Njorka i pričao mi o tom. Kada sam pre sedam godina prvi put bio na kongresu u Njorku, u klubu u i slušao profesora Muru, ja nisam znao da izađem iz te prostorije. I nisam znao o čemu se radi, se, šta se tu dešava. Ali evo jedan primjer iz života, pošto ovdje ima dosta sveta koji se ne bavi medicinom. Moja glavna sestra, 98. godine, gde sam ja bio načinik infertiliteta i van telesno oplodnji, kolega Dunjić bio moj asistent, je htjela da rodi treće dete i ja sam vodio tu trudnoću. Normalno sam vodio trudnoću i pratio nutra zvuku, sve je bilo savršeno. Jednog dana, pošto je ona naša glavna sestra, mi tu sad i doručku, mi jedemo i tako dalje, družimo se i pijemo kafu. Momir onako iz nekog fazona je pogledao ovom metodom i ništa nije rekao. Pošto ga ja poznajem, odmah sam vidio nešto u njegovom licu i kad sam ušao u kabinet, on je rekao, ova beba nije dobro. Rekao, super, sve je u kebe, šta mi nije dobro, si normalno. Kažu, obrati pažnju zbog tebe, to je naša glavna sestra, ti vodiš, ti si profesor, Tako omaneš tu, znate kako to neko izgubi bebu, onda ne bude neke gluposti, to će ti na tvoju reputaciju uticati. Malo me je zabrino, nisam mu ni verovor. Rekao sam, ok, ja sad ovo što znam. Završio se porođaj, rodila se beba, sve je bilo u redu, Abgar 9-10, vi znate lekari što je Abgar 9-10, ono kaže, moja beba dobila desetku. I ja sam bio presrećan, da se njegove slutnje nisu obistinile. Rekao sam, ono je sve u redu. Nakon godin dana 1999. godine, ta sestra je prešla da živi u Kraljevo, pozvao njen muž i rekao mi je, naša beba je umrla. Na institutu za majku djeta u Tiršovoj. Naglo pogošilo stanje i tako dalje, tako dalje, da on epičan priču. Ja sam odmah pozvao Momire, rekao sam, čoveče, ja ne mogu da verujem. E sad, to je o toj metodi. Ja moram da kažem sada nešto iz mog domena. Gospodin Petelar, imam vremena, imam minu dva. Izvolite. E, doktori koji su se... Ja se bavim u ovom bordu edukacijom, kliničkom implementacijom i hoću da vam samo tri rečenice kažem u vezi integritine medicine. Ne postoje dve medicine, ono što ste vi rekli malo pre. Jedna medicina, posebno usvojen taj stav u negde u Firenci pre dve godine. Nismo mi to sve izmislili, mi, mislim u Evropi. 
postoji konzorcijum univerziteta u Americi koji postoji 10 godina na čelu sa Harvardom 46 univerziteta koji su rekli nešto nije u redu. Farmakod industrija napreduje, imamo puno lekova, prave se aparati, narod je sve bolesni i šta se ovo dešava? Britanci su otišli dalje. Napravili su na lizu 2,5 hiljade protokola kod hroničnih nezaraznih bolesti. Ne kod hitnih urgentnih stanja da je hirurgija nastupa tako. Na 2,5 hiljade istraženih protokola koje primenjujemo od endokrinologije do kardiologije, onkologije. Koliko je trajala momira ta studija? 30 godina retrospektivno. Znate li, dragi moji prijatelji, kolika je bila efikasnost današnje medicine, današnjih lekova na tih 2500 procedura? 11 procenata. Šta je sa 80% ljudi? Još do 23 neki benefit. A šta je sa 70% ljudi? Kad sam taj podatak prvi put vidio, kao čovjek koji se bavio naukom i strukom, bio sam potpuno demoralisan. Šta su oni uradili? Nešto ne valja. Gde ide narod? Gde je narod ide? Pa vrhunski stručnjaci iz medicine, kao pacijenti koji se operišu i oni koji provode na kardiologiji, endokrinologiji, onkologiji neko vreme na lečenju i diagnostici, kad dođu kući, svi revidiraju terapiju. Čuju da je ovo dobro, čuju da onoga tamo, čuju da onoga ovamo, ne uzimu i lekove. Na Vojim medicinskoj akademiji sam držao predavanje, 200 lekara je bilo, Beograd je to čuvena institucija, jer su nas pozori da pitaju šta je to ta medicina, pa ako to ovako mi se ti baviš, samo treba da promeniš stav. Rekao sam, koji je odnos među pacijenta i lekara danas? Pitanje za sve vas, vrkonske stručnjake. Ovako sam stavio ispred njih. Rekao sam, laž, ogromna laž. Pacijent laže vas, Vi lažete pacijenta. Kako? Jednostavno. Kada pacijent pita doktora, čuo sam da postoji nešto drugo, neki lek, neka metoda. Doktor koji neće da se obavesti, niti ga interesuje da uči dobro na znanje, kaže, to je glupost. Na on ga slaže. Pacijent ide kući, dobije na papiru terapiju. Uzima sve drugo, pa malo i toga. I nije važno da li je bolje stanje ili lošije stanje. Kad svati kod njega, kaže, i si uzimo terapiju? Naravno. I on njega laže. Pa kako se onda lečimo? Šta radimo ljudi? Znači, jednostavno, ta relacija je neverovatna. Svaki pacijent, mi smo imali pacijente, vrhunske lekare koji nisu primjeli terapiju koju su dobili na frankovskim institucijama. Drugo, kada smo odlazili da kažemo informacije i nova znanja da pogledaju, sasvim dobro namenu udruženje je bilo da širi neke stvari iz fitoterapije, akupunktura, aerumede, kineske, indijske, nini važno, onkologiji i tako da i tako dalje, sa tim glavnim ljudima koji se time bave, oni su nas saslušali i rekli da, da, mi imamo protokole, hvala lepo doviđenja. Ok, to je naša informacija. A ta isti čovek posle šest meseci kada se njegova tetka, majka, žena ili dete razboli, zove, kaže, e, molim vas, dajte ono, imam problem u porodici. A ja ga pitam, pa kako te nije sramota da je to dobro za tvoje dete, čerku i ženu, ali nije dobro za tvoje pacijente? To je licimirje. To nije u redu. E, samo još dve rečenice. Integretna medicina je medicina koju poznajemo. Obogaćena sa svim saznanjima koje su naučno proverene, dokazane da su uspešne, da mogu pomoći, da mogu učestvovati u diagnostici, lečenju, podzinju kvaliteta života ili rehabilitaciji ljudi. Filozofija integrativne medicine je medicina 21. veka da je pacijent u centru pažnje, da mi promovišemo njegovo učešće u kreiranju njegovog terapije, lečenja i diagnostike. Pre svega na samopomoći. Kako? Svako saznanje da je neko bolestan izaziva ogromnu krizu bolesti. Lekar mora da svojom snagom, svojom energijom, svojim autoritetom, svojim znanjem pridobije pacijenta, da ga uključi u to terapijsko kolo sa svojim drugim kolegama i svim drugim znanjima što postoji i da promoviše, da preokrene krizu bolesti u jednu situaciju na status razvoja, volje, borbe, želje. Jer pacijent pada nemoćan, leže u krevetu i gleda vas kao Boga, a mi nismo bogovi. On leži, gleda vas, traži pomoć. A on treba da učestvuje u tome. I još jedna stvar, interesna medicina znači svo znanje 
koje posjedujemo da može pomoći dovesti tom jednom čovjeku koji vas gleda, koji je ušao ambulantu, pa makar to bilo sad neko ovde selo blizu Ljubljane. On mora imati sposobnost kriranja terapije, kako to primeniti tom čoveku. Nema jedne iste bolesti kod dva čoveka, nema iste dijagnoze i nema, nemoguće imati dve iste situacije na dva mjesta. Hvala vam lepo, oprostite. Hvala lepa, profesor Bjastanešiću. Mi smo dosegli skoraj dvakratni čas običajnega evropskega večera, ampak imamo tist, da se ni noben dolgo času, ampak mislim, da bilo spodobno tudi do profesorja Omure, da ta večer počasi zaključimo. Ne vidim, mislim, še eno vprašanje, zadnje vprašanje. Last question. Yes, last, uh, and very important question. Um, Dr. Omura, I, I was really thrilled to hear about your uh, diagnosis uh, methods, uh, and I'm wondering what are your uh, non-invasive treatments, because especially in oncology, these are, in my opinion, very destructive treatments that people go through in, uh, so that's the question. Okay, I think uh, your question is very justified. In the most of the standard treatment, you try to kill the cancer cells, and in the process, often you, you end up killing a patient. So you end up completely opposite result. Your main purpose is to save the patient without side effect. But most of the chemotherapy, they create damage to the brain, uh, create a damage to the heart, and uh, they have a list of the side effect of the chemotherapy in the American Cancer Society. They list the damage to the brain. They don't even mention damage to the heart. And we have seen many patients, uh, doctor says, oh, you're doing well. And the patient says, I'm not doing well. I feel getting worse. And when I order electrocardiogram, electrocardiogram come back within normal limit. And we are finding out uh, According to our research, there is a specific part of the uh, electrocardiogram called the rising part of the T-wave. There is a, a special area called vulnerable period for ventricular fibrillation. And that particular area, you know, electrocardiogram looks normal, but when we test our method, we are finding out serious changes in the heart. And these are, according to the current electrocardiogram, it doesn't exist. And uh, so, you know, even electrocardiogram, you know, people think it's a reliable test. And uh, once it looks like normal, then doctor thinks it's normal. But uh, we are now finding out early stage these abnormality which cannot be seen, but we can detect with the bidistrolling test. And uh, also recently uh, we discovered very important things. This is uh, we discovered within the past one year. In the human body or any animal actually, there is a uh, every researcher agrees that there is a receptor called vitamin D3 receptor. And uh, when vitamin D3 receptor uh, is not stimulated, you will create all kinds of problems, including cancer. But when we give optimal dose of vitamin D3, 
cancer parameter go down not one tenth, not one hundredth, over one thousandth, they reduced it without any side effect and almost like nothing, very little expenses. And, uh, and this involves every organ. And uh, now we are finding out how to make uh, this uh, detection of the uh, vitamin D3 uh, deficiency. And uh, we are finding out so many patients with, with uh, cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, overweight, insomnia, depression, Alzheimer's. In, uh, we, we are finding out they all have, a, many of them have a, this vitamin D3 deficient syndrome, and which we can detect as a extremely low acetylcholine and extremely low DHEA. And DHEA is a normal hormone released by adrenal gland. And uh, many people don't consider this so important. But we are finding out D3, and uh, D3 itself cannot stimulate a so-called D3 receptor. But uh, in order to have an effective form of D3, you have to have a normal uh, liver and a normal kidney. And uh, through this two process, it becomes an effective form to stimulate vitamin D3 receptor. And when that happens, your body weight reduces without using any uh, other artificial means. And I had a one patient, last patient I saw in New York, this patient one month ago, uh, before I saw last week, his body weight was 320 pounds. He's almost cannot even move around, so heavy. And, uh, and inactive and uh, cannot memorize anything because he has a very low acetylcholine, that means the brain cannot function, and very low DHEA level. And when we gave one optimal dose, which we gave uh, 400 international unit, compared with the commonly used 2,000 uh, international unit, and also he had a cancer of the uh, the doctor and at one of the major hospitals, they diagnosed as a cancer of urinary bladder. When I examined, I don't find any cancer of urinary bladder, but I found the cancer of the prostate gland, which metastasized to the urinary bladder. And he has already operated three times in less than one year. And cancer parameter become practically zero, just one, one dose. And, uh, and then one month later, he came back about 40 pound reduction. He said he tried all kinds of the methods of the overweight reduction, nothing worked. Just one optimal dose of D3. And his blood pressure was high, it become almost normal. And his uh, <coughs> blood sugar was high, it become almost normal. And he had a pain all over the body, it disappeared. It's just one optimal dose. And, uh, and also, he can think and he can memorize uh, without any difficulty. And uh, you can produce almost like a miracle. But few, very few doctors even believe what I say. That's why I show the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <The gole. clears throat> 
Jaz bom rekel samo to, tale aplavz sem razumel kot izraz hvaležnosti, priznanja in vašo zadnjo besedo. Hvala pa vsem. Thank <laughs> you.